Welcome to the Marie Manucherry podcast. Over the last 30 years, it has been my joy to assist humanity in aligning with their magnificence so they may heal, discover their natural gifts, and communicate with loved ones living on the other side. May you also experience delight while we dance in the powerful, intuitive world of energy. Let's get going. Hello, and welcome to where energy meets the divine podcast. I'm Marie Manucherry. I wanted to talk a little bit before we go to our phone lines about hesitation. A lot of people hesitate in their life. They don't move forward. They hold themselves back. It's a very low vibrational feeling, but I think for some people, it almost feels like intuition. It feels like they they feel like the universe is telling them, no, you can't do this. You're not good enough, or you don't know what you're talking about, or you're wrong. But what's critically important to understand is that the universe doesn't feel that way about anyone. The universe doesn't think that anything is wrong or that anyone is wrong. And so that hesitation is your resistance. Think of life like this. In, in the human world, we're supposed to be moving forward in inspired action and inspired choices. And when we hold ourselves back from that inspiration, we experience a disalignment. We're still always aligned, like our energy is always aligned to our higher self, to our God consciousness. But it, we can feel very much unaligned when we are resisting, hesitating. We're pulling back. We're not trusting ourselves. We're not allowing our energy to, to flow. And when that happens, we also start attracting other people who agree with us with the resistance, other people who you know, are in their own resistance and their own hesitation. And sometimes misery loves company. And then we take it as a validation, like, see, the universe doesn't want me to do this. You know, I shouldn't be doing this. We don't want to do that. I want you to start to recognize in your vibration, the difference between taking inspired action and hesitating because hesitation is not you in alignment with your divine source energy. It's not. Uh, hesitation actually feels really uncomfortable. I think it's just a familiar feeling. So many people experience it all the time that they, they don't recognize that they are moving out of energetic alignment, even though everyone's always aligned, but, you know, out of all their true knowledge and consciousness, and they are following what other people are saying or what they think other people are feeling because they don't trust their own intuition. When I was picking up Charles, and I know I talk about my dog all the time, even though I have three kids and five grandkids and I love all of them, but I mean, he's the one who follows me around the house all day long. You know, I go on five mile walks with him every day. So when I was going to get him and I was someone, I'm sure I've shared this story who never thought I should ever have a dog because I was scared of them. Literally. I was one of those people that would stand on a chair, even when a little dog came by that was yapping and scream at the top of my lungs. I was that scared. And I had this inspiration. I was inspired for like a year to look at puppies at different breeding sites. Cause I knew I wanted a certain type of dog that didn't shed because um, some of my family members have allergies. So those are hard to find in rescue um, situations. And I have cats, so I can't have a dog that's going to chase my now 16 year old cats. So I'm looking at all these breeding sites and I'm inspired. I'm happy. It's making me excited. And I'm asking my friends who have dogs and everyone's saying, except for one person who, who also loves to do um, intuitive pet readings, Everyone would say, oh yeah, you should, you should, even a couple of my daughters. But this one person who, um, you know, had a profession or has a profession talking to animals intuitively, who was probably in just some form of resistance themselves, picked up on my resistance because I wasn't really trusting myself. I mean, like after spending so many years terrified of dogs, I was kind of surprised that the universe is wanting me to go get one. And so... I, I ignored this person. I recognized that it was a form of resistance and I found, uh, the, the breeder that I wanted to get my dog from. And I told this person, I'm going to go pick up my dog. And this person didn't like the breeder that I chose, didn't like that I was going to drive so far by myself. 
um, insisted to come along, but I was aware of the resistance. This is the place I want you to be in. I want you to be aware of the resistance because this is what's going to empower you and start to get you to trust yourself more and believe in yourself. And also be okay with people being in resistance around you. Like we don't all have to wait till everybody's in agreement. I was actually really entertained as we're driving to go get, you know, my dog or pick him out. And this person's complaining in the car, you know, and I'm just, it, it even just gave me more assertion that my intuition was correct because the feeling of the intuition was so much higher than the resistance that was being communicated. And when I walked into the house, I, out of the corner of my eye, because there were several puppies to choose from, I saw my dog, you know, and my friend said, did you just pick him out? And I go, I did. I just picked him out. So Eventually, if we ignore our own resistance, our own hesitation, and we start to follow inspired action, even people who kind of match their vibration to our hesitation too, because maybe we're not in that energy as, you know, completely, but obviously they can smell it, they can sense it, they can feel it. And maybe some people just like to argue more than others, or, or maybe you have been on the other end where you're providing resistance towards someone else's life. We've all done that too. If you can be entertained by the resistance and the hesitation, but stay in connection with your own inspiration, your life will move very quickly, very fastly fastly. I don't think that's a word. And you can accomplish many more of your goals, your aspirations. You will actually continue to be inspired if you follow inspiration. If you keep following the hesitation or listening to the people who are attracted to your resistance and you play resistance with them, it's going to be a slower pace to actual, actualizing all the things you absolutely 100% deserve. Okay, now I'm going to go to the phone lines, to the voicemails, and answer questions. And thank you, everyone, for leaving me these questions. I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Marie. My name is Anthea. I live in Malaysia, and I'm originally from South Africa. I have been learning so much listening to your podcasts over the last two months, and I finally decided to take the opportunity to hear from you, all my spirit guides, Oh, if my lovely dad who passed away just over three years ago has anything to say, I would be so overjoyed. There are two things plaguing me for the last 20 and 30 years. I recently turned 40 and I'm still struggling with cystic acne. You mentioned this on a podcast a few weeks ago and it struck a chord at how tired I am dealing with it. I have been on Roaccutane twice when I was 20 and 13. I've been on the contraceptive pill for my entire life until about two years ago. Mm. And in the last few months, I've been trying to change my nutrition to focus on improving my gut health and limiting dairy and caffeine and alcohol, although alcohol issues, another struggle for another day, that uh, the cystic acne is still around. And so I'd love to hear from you how I should be approaching this differently. And then my second big thing is around my future career. I've had a successful corporate career and I finally reached a level of finding some enjoyment in what I do. I'm working for a very good company with great people. It's taken a long time to find this level of satisfaction. So before I reach a point of dissatisfaction and boredom, <laughs> I'd like to start planning my next career move. I feel I don't want it to be in the corporate world. I find parts of business strategy and consulting and leadership interesting, but I don't feel completely full, fulfilled and I don't wake up with enthusiasm every day. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on what career path I should start to look into next. I've tried to meditate, stay calm and present, figure out what brings me joy. But I would like to hear if there's a specific path to just help guide me a bit more. Thank you so much. I'd be so grateful if you could answer both or one or even none. Um, I am just so happy to have found you and I look forward to your podcast every Thursday, well, Friday here in Malaysia. So it's a great start to my weekend. Thank you, Marie. Um, you're very welcome, Athena. Yes. No more Accutane for you. That is the drug I took in my mid thirties. Um, but it's also hepatic toxic, right? So yeah, after 35 years of having, or not 35, but whatever it was, you know, 25 years of having cystic acne, I also took that very strong drug, but no more. You've already had it twice and it is not 
good for the liver. So we don't want to give it to you anymore. I think truly the near infrared and red light therapy will work wonders. I love the company Platinum Therapy. Red Rush is also a really good company. Um, and it's the combination of infrared and near infrared light that is incredible for the skin, but it's incredible for the entire body from um, heart muscle to bones, tissues. And if anyone's listening, who's considering to doing this therapy and you have a health issue, make sure you ask your doctor or call the company Platinum Therapy um, and let them know. I, I don't know of um, many contraindications, but it's always a good thing to check. So that's what I think that you need, Athena, is red light therapy. You crack me up about your job. I mean, obviously you overthink and analyze a lot of this too much. I mean, you're happy. You are somewhat fulfilled. You actually enjoy it. I think you're a writer through and through. So if you want to start a second career or think about what you'll do, I don't know, 20 years from now when you retire or whatnot like that, maybe start writing, start taking classes or reading books on writing, having fun. See if you notice that that spikes your energy because you seem to have natural writing ab ability. Your dad wants me to tell you look beautiful, just exactly the way you are. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Hi, Marie. It's Susanna from London. I want to thank you for your work and the beautiful energy you send out to the universe. Um, also, I want to ask you to tap into my mother's energy. She has been suffering with uh, severe leg pains um, for many, many, many years, 30 plus years. And I just wanted to uh, see whether there's anything that we can do to help her or the, the cause of her leg pains. Recently, she has become uh, almost immobile and it just pains me to see her suffer as much. Thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing from you. Hello, Susanna. And I'm really sorry about your mom's leg pain. Your mom won't let go. And she is a complainer. Now, granted, she has pain in her legs. That could lower her vibration, make her feel uncomfortable, and make her complain more. But she doesn't know how to surrender, get out of the way. She thinks about the past all the time. She probably talks about it a lot. And I don't mean the happy things. She talks about things that she complains about. This is not good for her legs. So to get her leg situation to change, if you can convince her, because I don't think it would be easy, and if you could let go of your fears about her suffering, that actually will help her. When people are suffering, if we are worried about them and fretting about them, that's low vibrational energy. We need to think positively. So even if you can't think positively about her legs, because that's a hard one when she's in that much physical pain, um, think about moments in her life that were amazing or how lucky she is because of her environment or how much she's loved, but don't spend time sending more energy to something in a negative way that needs to change into something positive. So please talk to her about letting go and ask her to stop complaining. I think again, that will be a little challenging. I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Hi, Marie, this is Tamara. I'm calling from um, Florida. And I am from Puerto Rico. Um, I've been learning about everything that I like. For example, I've been learning about angels, but not to the complete stage of the angels. Like once I start learning more, it's like I, um, I sabotage myself. That's the way I think I am. And if I, I like to learn about car readings, I start learning about car readings, but I didn't complete it to the last. Um, if I need to take a course or if I need, I tr make so many excuses like, oh, I can't afford it or, oh, I start to get 
um, negative. And I just want to learn. Lately, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to be learning about energy because I, but I haven't started or I haven't picked someone because if I pick someone to learn something, I start questioning. Like, they supposed to be good. Mm-hmm. Like, I question everything. I don't know if it's a blockage of myself or if it's me sabotaging myself or if, if I need to love more myself. Like I would like to see if you have any inputs in my um, in my energy, and I would like to start something. Like I would like to learn about Reiki, for example, and I would like to to find the right directions. I will not like to start it without not knowing because then I will be um, not completing the assignment. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, um, yeah, you see, I doubt myself. Mm -hmm. I just want to start something and finish it and say, be proud of it and uh, complete it and know that I know. It's like, I doubt myself. I will, um, well, I would like to know what you need to tell me. And uh, I wish that I could um, talk to you more. Well, see you. So first of all, be nice to yourself. You know, even if you haven't finished a class or you're not picking up a book, be really, really nice to yourself. That's what I do when I don't feel motivated to finish tasks that I have to do. I'm kind to myself instead of going, oh, you forgot to do this. Oh my gosh, you have, now you have to stay up late. Oh, you know, um, I just um, am kind to myself and loving to myself. And then you have the energy to do it. So this is, has a lot to do with self-love and self-worth. And as you fall in love with yourself, you'll be able to feel the energy of the teachers that you're thinking of taking classes with. And that could be inspiring for you as well. But you're going to even have to go back to the things you've already studied, but that you didn't complete and appreciate and love yourself even for not completing it. Like, I love you, even though you didn't do that, sweetheart. I think you had too much negative reinforcement as a kid. No offense to your parents, by the way, everyone's doing the best they can, but I think there was too much negativity in your childhood. And so in your mind, um, you go into some blaming or shaming of yourself and that's been the pattern. And if you love yourself, it'll disappear. And then you'll find a great class and you'll be very excited about it and you'll do well. You're, you will do very well in your classes. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I had a question as to, like, what my guides want me to know. I'm feeling a little bit lost lately, and I feel like they've been trying to talk to me, but I haven't been able to listen because, you know, two kids under two and just oblivious to it all. So I can't wait to hear. Thank you. Okay, Jennifer, you're welcome. It's kind of general, you know, like guides talk to people about everything all day long. So I'm just kind of peeking into all the things that they, you know, would say to you so I can come up with, so try to be more specific in the future, just because, you know, I mean, I could, and I will figure something out, but I don't spend a lot of time with each caller so I can get to as many as possible. Hmm. Let's see, it's taking me a little bit. Spirit guides are in kind of a slightly different arena, if you will. So because they kind of in a way have left the heavens to guide us, um, those who choose to guide humans, I always see like this corridor or like a hallway where they kind of all hang out in, even though there's tons of space in between them and and they don't see each other unless they want to, because they even communicate to each other and they work together to help people accomplish certain things. Like if our last caller would be nice to herself for not taking her class, for not taking the classes that she wants or not finishing them, then after she's shifted her energy and was kinder to herself, her guides would help her to the perfect class that would be super fun for her. A friend might even say, oh my gosh, I found this perfect class for, for you. You're going to love it. And that's because, you know, 
uh, her, her guides would talk to her friend's guides and, and the guides would get together and kind of formulate a plan to get my Jelena to go to a class or read a particular book. So I'm just, I know, because you actually have a good life, Jennifer. Nothing's really wrong. <laughs> nothing's, from what I can see, nothing's out of order. Nothing's terrible. Maybe you could get a little bit happier. Maybe you could ask the universe to please express to you whatever's in your highest good. Ask that every night after the kids go to bed and, you know, the house is quiet. Because some people do kind of an energy work situation in the morning, you know, and some people do it at night. It's some people do it both, but those times of days are when the earth is quiet, you know, in the morning, if it's early, very few people are up and about, or if at night, like it's actually almost 11 PM here in Seattle, Pacific time, I'm finishing up some podcasts before I finish some other tasks and it's quiet. So, so it's a really great time. I recommend you meditate and you can meditate by listening to white noise. Wait till everybody goes to bed or the house is really quiet. Find your favorite place to sit. Maybe get a cup of peppermint tea, close your eyes, rest in the lower half of your body. That means feel the lower half of your body. Be present with your toes, your glutes, your legs, and then ask the question, please express to me, whatever is in my highest good in this moment. And then don't think about the question after that, like escape from it, leave it alone, go back to feeling your toes or your glutes, have a couple of sips of tea and just be happy being present in a lovely, quiet home so that you can hear your guides. Okay. All right. One more because I have other things to do. Obviously. <laughs> Hi, Marie. This is Linda from New Zealand. I'd like to ask a question about energy healing as a profession. When do you know you're ready to take clients and start a business doing this work? I've been doing energy healing for many years. Uh, I really love doing it, and I just want to know how I'm going to know I'm ready and where to find clients. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Linda. So why aren't you ready? already, if you've been doing it for years, I think that this is more about receiving, like you're afraid to receive because you're going to need to charge. You know, I believe, and so did Dr. Yosui, who's the most recent founder of Reiki, that there needs to be an equal exchange of energy and um, that people actually take more responsibility for their healing when they are participating in some way and financially paying for an energy session allows that to occur right? Because people don't have time to wash our dishes or I wish they would, or mow the lawn or fold our laundry. I could use help with all of those things actually. But I think it's time. I think it's time that you did it. And here's the phrase I used for years and years and years. And we already know I have too many clients um, that I'm, you know, always very, very busy with client work. May those whom I can easily help find me so if you could start to repeat that question and also allow yourself to feel receptive, perhaps visualize that all of the pores on your body are open and you're just pulling in energy. That also allows people to be more psychic, more intuitive, have more consciousness, have a lot more awareness, um, makes it very critical and important that that occurs. Maybe for five minutes you do that exercise. Maybe you visualize light or you hear wind or you feel rain coming into all your pores for like five minutes twice a day. And tell yourself, wow, honey, you're an incredible healer. I'm really proud of you. Start having positive conversations towards yourself about your gifts and what you would like to accomplish. That could be very effective for you as well. Um, so get going. Just go ahead and get going. Okay, everyone, I know this is a short podcast. I apologize for that, but I have other things to do, um, but I enjoy very much talking to all of you. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.